Hi guys, I have got a really exciting one for you today. I am with Paul, who is the captain of Loon. Hi Paul. Hi, welcome aboard. Good morning. Now for those of you who don't know Loon, which is quite a famous boat actually, if you um, Google or YouTube search Loon, you will find it instantly. But Loon is a 221 foot super yacht and uh, you're the guy in charge that that's it <laughs> yeah fantastic now i put a post up in my community section recently asking what questions that you guys would like to ask the captain of such a yacht and you came up with a whole range of stuff and i had them all here on my phone so we're just going to pile through is that all right let's do it we'll wing it brilliant brilliant let's see how we get on no outtakes <laughs> <laughs> can only go well yeah okay now there's a bunch of questions on the same theme, so I'll, I'll roll off the three or four of them because I think they're all going to have the same answer. Okay. So somebody's asked, um, I have worked my way up into advanced powerboat, including Yacht Master Theory, and got it commercially endorsed. How much more do I need to do to progress to someone of your level? Somebody else has asked, what's a good path to becoming a super yacht captain? And how does that path differ from a cruise ship or a merchant captain? Mm -hmm. um, and somebody's asked, what age were you when you started and what was your career? progression so okay. it's really kind of how do you get to where you are in how, how did you do it how do you join yachting yep. yeah so th that's a bit of a multi-loaded question yeah. there but uh, I was lucky enough that I started sailing on sailboats at Royal Perth Yacht Club in Western Australia I think I was five or six years old and thrown into the optimists and worked my way up through the uh, sailing program at the local yacht club and then um, got to 17 18 raced professionally for a number of years and then I was at a regatta once uh, and all these big super yachts were there with all their owners and all their professional crew. And I was like, why am I professionally sailing for $50 a day, basically living paycheck to paycheck when there's these super yacht crew that sail around the world, live on these luxurious boats, go to amazing destinations and are getting paid a fortune. Yeah. <laughs> so from there, that was basically where I sort of transitioned more away from the sailing and onto the yachting side. And uh, But I started at the bottom yep. um, and you know, cleaned bilges, swabbed the decks, and, uh, and then over the last, what, 15, 18 years in the industry, I've uh, worked my way up and here I am. Wow, that, mm -hmm. I mean that's a big step, isn't it? Eighteen years to be yep. to go from from zero, really, mm -hmm. as you say, cleaning the bilges, to running a yacht like this. That's incredible. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of the same as becoming an airline pilot. It's you know you do your hours, you do a step, you do an apprenticeship. So you start, you you know, almost at zero. You have your basic safety courses when you first join the industry to get on the boats. Right. And then you do a couple of years, and you go off and do your PB two, as someone mentioned, which is allows you to drive a, a rib. Yeah. And then next level your yacht master 200 you hold that for a couple of years then your OOW so you're allowed to hold a navigational watch OOW chief officer then you're allowed to be a chief mate on one of these and then finally your captain but then just because you got the ticket you then actually have to go all the way back down again and start on you know I, I went so I went from a chief officer on a 280 foot yacht so a little bit bigger than us and then went all the way down to a captain on a 110 footer and about every two or three years you know jumped ship and went to an owner that had a slightly bigger yacht spent a bit of time there moved to the next one wow. and then i'm lucky enough i've been on loon for eight years now mm -hmm. um with a fantastic owner and we started with a 155 foot 47 meter motor yacht and then we sold her when and bought the 55 meter 180 foot now we're on loon 221 uh 68 meter and you never know how the week goes we might have a bigger one next week so <laughs> that's <laughs> astonishing that is, that's brilliant, that's really mm -hmm. interesting. Let me see what else we've got. I think that's answered most of those. Um, actually, this is interesting because it, I think you've already answered it, but somebody has asked, what's the base qualifications do the crew need yep. to get on in the first place? Yep, so yeah, ex exactly. So depending on where you're coming in the industry, are you gonna be, you kind of need to have a bit of an idea of what you wanna do. Are you a chef, are you a stewardess, or, or steward nowadays, yeah. um, deckhand? Uh, or you know uh, engineering so but everyone on the boat has to have what is called an SDCW 95 that is a five or six day basic safety course so it shows you how to fly a life raft how to put a life jacket on CPR all that sort of stuff and then the visas so depending on what passport you have do you have your visas to go into America do you have your Schengen visa to come into the United States or wherever else the boat the boat is traveling right mm -hmm. okay that makes perfect sense excellent what else? Oh, this is an interesting one. 
What is the most strenuous task for a captain? <laughs> uh, a captain or a super yacht captain? <laughs> a super yacht captain, <laughs> yes. Um, it's not. It's not the boat. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, I am a. I am in a managerial position as well, yeah. so it doesn't yeah. matter if you are ashore or running. You know, I am running a multi-million-dollar business here. So, yeah. uh, and I also have twenty-nine employees underneath me. Um, yeah. So, the HR side is always fun. Mm -hmm. You know, as much as we are all a big family and friends, there's always little dramas going on. So, yeah. trying to nip them uh, as quickly as possible so that little dramas don't become big dramas. And uh, and yeah, just keeping everyone you know alive and <laughs> and healthy <laughs> and <course. laughs> yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I guess that's the thing with it, really, isn't it? I think a lot of people think super yacht captain. You're driving a, a super yacht, yeah. but you're right. Actually, what you've touched on then, I think, is is spot on. You're, you're that's that's almost a side aspect of running a business, mm -hmm. isn't it? Driving the boat is two percent of the job, yeah. not even. Um, and that's the funny thing is that's the thing that we go to school for for all these all this time to yeah. get the tickets and are trained. But then that is only two percent of the job, and it is it is running. The crew. If you've got a happy crew, you've got great guest experience, um, and then yeah, keeping the boat floating, making sure that all the legalities of the vessel uh, are going on as well. On a vessel this big, or being over 500 gross tons, uh, the paperwork is just enormous, and so making sure that you know all the certificates and regulations are being followed properly. And I think one thing perhaps we didn't touch on was somebody asked about how this differs from being a captain of a cruise ship or the mm -hmm. captain of a merchant vessel. Yep. When you get to this kind of level, is there much difference? Um, the licensing's kind of the same, mm -hmm. but uh, obviously the cruise ships are very corporate. Um, they have much bigger teams. Uh, you know, as far as on here, we're a bridge team of three, so it's it's just much smaller, much more condensed. Like if you are an officer on a cruise ship, all you really do is bridge duties. Whereas you know, we come in, we pull into an anchorage, we drop the anchor, and then I'm out there launching jet skis. I'm then you know helping serve serve drinks. Uh, so you're doing everything a bit more guest servitors. It is a smaller team, but it is still two to one with guest to crew ratio but you, you know you've got to wear many hats and do many things on, on a super yacht yeah, yeah I can see how that would be different totally what else have we got here uh, this is an interesting one. this is all reverse really what's the best feature of being a captain and what drives you to continue playing the captain role every day I, it, it's the best job in the world as far as I'm concerned I grew up on the water sailing as we mentioned earlier and it's just uh I guess you can go to cool places. I mean, we're in Monaco right now. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this is amazing, even though it's raining today. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we're always traveling. I think, uh, especially for me, I can't sit still for too long. So right. it works perfect. We we winter in the Caribbean. We're, we're you know, summer in the Mediterranean. I always have the coolest people on board. Um, you know, many, many A-list celebrities, uh, pioneers of industry. and uh, And then just my team the crew i mean that's such an important part like, so so many of the crew on loon have been with me for a number of years that they are family and so you wake up in the morning and you're, you're with your mates and uh you've got a mission and you get it done brilliant mm -hmm. brilliant and i can i can totally see that okay someone's asked if you have to cross an ocean so because oh, yep. you're going to florida i think in a week's time on right? monday monday yeah. monday we're out of here um, it says, um, what do you need in terms of bridge crew? So do you need a captain and a first officer or do you need more than that? And how do you plan for such a passage? Yep. So we start planning about two, three weeks out. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And so obviously captain and uh, chief officer Tyler is going to be driving the boat over for the first time. And so I'm not going to be on board for the crossing. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good time for me to get away and get vacation. Yeah. And then, um, so we'll have three bridge officers. So mm -hmm. it'll be... Uh, captain, second officer, uh, chief officer, second officer, and then we have about three or four. All the deckhands come up and do their time as well as a lookout. Right. But um, and then you've got three engineers down below, a chef, uh, two stewardesses usually on board to just you know stay on the daily duties, making sure that everything laundry's turned over, the vessel's nice and clean. So there's still 14, 15 people on board. Um, then obviously weather you got to take into account. We we work really hard, especially this time of year with hurricane season. Mm. Um, fuel stops, so we go from Monaco here straight to Gibraltar, get the tax-free fuel there in Jib, yep. and then uh, then we try to decide are we straight across the pond or do we go down into the Canary Islands and sort of wait there, let some weather wind weather path, and, and go from there. And that's based 
around the weather. So if you saw a really good spell, you might think, right, let's hit it, let's, let's go. straight across. Exactly. If things are looking a little bit more shaky, you might think, okay, Canaries, take a view. And exactly. So you come out of jib, you sort of turn left, hug the coast of Africa for a bit, and then um, you sort of do your go, no go as you're passing the Canaries, and you try and stay south into, you know, a little bit closer to the equator and stay in the calmer weather with the following seas. But, Perfect. Uh, yeah, it's always it's actually always really nice when we get to stop there in the Canaries, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice space, isn't it? Mm. And it's not a question, but it's just cropped up for me. Does that feel weird for you? Like you're sending the boat away? It's like, because it must feel like your baby to some Oh, definitely. It does, it's like giving someone the keys to your car. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> but, but, but what a car, you know, it's like mm. the keys to your Bugatti or something. Yeah. And do you, do you track it? You're home going, where is it now? Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. so, I can imagine and that. we're lucky with uh, Starlink nowadays. Yeah. Um, the communication is just so great that, yeah. you know, we obviously have multiple different types of tracking on board. Um, even all the CCTV cameras, all 22 of them around the boat, I can access at no any way, point really? anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, it's kind of a little bit big brother, but, yeah. you know, I am discussing with the bridge team constantly and also just not being on board. So if there is an incident, it's always good to, you know, for, say, Chief Officer Tyler, who'll be Captain Tyler, I guess, then, yeah. uh, to call me and say, hey, you know, we've got this situation and I'm not on board or emotionally in the situation so yeah. I can sort of help them work through the, through it all. And we discuss weather routing and everything. So uh, we bring in a meteorologist team, which is off the boat, and then we'll say, Luna's departing, departing Gibraltar on this time. We're going to do average of 12 knots. Uh, we're going to go past the Canary Islands, and then they'll, they'll sort of help out a lot as well. And they send through daily updates of the, the weather. And so, and we, you don't just go straight line. There is, it's a zigzag as you're coming high to let us say, a, a pressure system move underneath uh, you okay. or you come down to let one go above you. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, as a super yacht, we're not a tanker or something where it's like shortest, fastest route. Yeah. I mean, you know, we go into Force 10 or something and uh, champagne glasses break and, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So we do try to keep it as calm as possible. Of course, of course. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's fundamentally safe to presume to go into Force 10. It's just uncomfortable. Oh, yeah, exactly. And then, you know, that's when the crew start to complain. Yeah, of and... course. Yeah, <laughs> it's, you know, so, there's no fun. Man. Yeah, it's, it is no fun. So we do try to keep it as nice and calm as possible. The boat can, hand, the boat can handle a lot more than the crew can. Yeah, mm -hmm. understood. Good. Let's see what else we've got. That's just an interesting one. So when you're on board and you're you're obviously here, how much time do you get to relax? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. Yeah, it is, it is a full-time job. It's yeah. from the minute you wake up to the min minute you go to sleep at night. Um, yeah. It is, you are on call, you right. know. The boat is a living, breathing thing. Yeah. Um, you know, right now we've got two generators running, it's floating, there's boats next door, there's weather incoming. So you are always on alert. Um, you know, and then you've got you know, 19 crew members as well that, you know, especially during the Monaco show, are out in the bars till late at night as well. So um, there's always something. You are on call 24-7. Um, you sleep with one eye open, but it's part of it. And yeah. after many years, you just get used to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how does that work then in terms of, of time off? So you obviously have a period of time on the boat. Yep. Um, how does that? So uh, the junior crew get sixty days vacation a year. So and then occasional weekends if we're not if we're not uh, working. Yeah. But um, for the, all the officers are on what's called rotation. So you work for eight weeks on solidly, and then you go home for eight weeks, and then you work for eight weeks again. So that's with now Chief Officer Tyler stepping up into that junior captain role, allows me to take a, a little bit more vacation. Perfect. Mm -hmm. oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Right. What else have we got? What else have we got? I think we kind of touched on this one a little bit earlier, but how much time do you or does the yacht actually spend at sea cruising? If you took a typical month, say, yep. how much of that percentage-wise would you say is actually out and going? We're probably out two and a half weeks. Sometimes it depends on the time of year as well. Obviously, Mediterranean summer season starts usually end of April with the Monaco Grand Prix, and then all the way through to now with the Monaco Boat Show are kind of the two bookends of the summer season. Right, and um, with non-stop like we have the crew have had two days off since april wow. but um but it's been a very good season for them yeah. um where you know if it's eight, uh, early april uh, march we've got spring break so we're normally a little busy then but january february are usually pretty dead months and we're either down in the caribbean either at anchor in the bvis or tied up to a dock somewhere in st martin so it really depends on the time of year but usually if you average it out over a year it's probably uh, 
30 weeks, 25 weeks a year that we're moving, right. and then we're probably doing about 18 weeks of guests on board. Right. So, mm -hmm. okay. Excellent. Ah, this is an interesting one, and you touched on this one yesterday because we did a tour of the boat yesterday. Um, someone's asked, when you retire, will you get, or indeed have you already got, a boat of your own, and if so, what is it? Yes, yes, of course. So actually, currently I have a 32 for Everglades that's uh, behind my house in Florida. Oh, nice. So that is a, a, just a nice little center console yeah. um, that I can run to the Bahamas, go to the sandbar, go out fishing um, and play on. Uh, but yes, the retirement plan, still maybe 10 years or so away, mm -hmm. is a 50-ish you know, foot cat and uh, sail off into the sunset, I guess. Fantastic. Mm. And will you do charters on it? No. <laughs> no. Maybe some of the Patreons can come out. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Got to throw that in there. Perfect. Good. That's a good one. Um, this is an interesting one. Um, what is the most number of, of guests, but also the least number of guests that you've had on charter, on an individual charter? Yep. Um, most number of guests the boat can legally carry is 12. Right. So we're allowed to carry you know, 12 guests. Um, we do have seven staterooms on board, but um, obviously still only allowed to have 12. Yeah. Uh, Monaco Grand Prix, though, we had, I think, up to 250 people on during oh, the day, wow. uh, during yeah. the year. But yeah. obviously, we only had 12 sleeping on board the boat. Understood. Uh, least number of guests, one. We, really? we had a some gentleman that came on board and was writing his memoirs and oh, just wow. wanted uh, somewhere quiet and peaceful to be. So That's I mean, quite an extravagant way of finding somewhere quiet and peaceful, but exactly. good for him. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, that was, you know, we've had twos and threes quite often. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, your wedding parties, honeymoons, uh, you know, um, yeah, twos and threes often, you know, um, but we actually rarely have the full 12. It's often sixes and eights and then like the family units, especially post COVID. We've seen that a lot more where it's not six couples and coming on board for say a 50 or 60th birthday or a big celebration. Now it's more the family units of, you know, at most grandparents, kids, grandkids. Um, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, that makes total sense. The guy writing his memoirs, where did he write them? He wasn't inside the boat down in his cabin writing them. No, I mean, obviously we've got a great owner's office on board. Of course. But, uh, I mean, all over. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I got really like morning, that idea. Have a coffee. Yeah. That's there fantastic. You go. Yeah. Let me know when you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know when I can afford it. Okay. Somebody's asked, uh, Loon is one of the most, um, I don't know where they get this information from, you'll tell me if they're, if they're wrong, I don't mm -hmm. suspect they are. So they've written, Loon is one of the most cash positive charter boats out there. What do you think are the major factors that contribute to that? And does that mean that the owner doesn't get to spend a lot of time on board? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, exactly. It's a super yacht, you're never going to make money on it. Right. The, the aim is always to just try and balance it or, okay. or not lose as much right got gotcha. you um, so it's more about offsetting costs than making a profit exactly gotcha. exactly so if you're thinking about buying a super yacht as a business mm -hmm. yeah it doesn't work right okay, um, that's interesting. <laughs> but um yeah so i mean obviously we do anywhere the aim is to try and get to 20 weeks of charter this year okay. at an average of say five hundred thousand dollars a week so right. you know it's a quite a lot of money coming in yeah but um obviously the more you charter, the more the wear and tear is, the more you got to expand. And, you know, so we spend a lot every year on maintenance and, uh, you know, soft goods, carpets, all that sort of stuff that get, that get worn out faster than a, than a traditional yacht. So, right. um, you know, it does, it does work well though. Yeah. And, and then to the second part of that is yes, obviously because we are so busy, no, the owner doesn't get to use the boat as much as you know maybe some people would like but you know he is a very busy gentleman with his own company and things going on yeah. so he gets about two two to four weeks on board a year which you know he's happy with at the moment yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's interesting and i always find actually i was a yacht broker for many years mm -hmm. and i always found that the smaller the boat the bigger proportion of that person's uh, income and time and everything else had to be spent on it. Exactly. So somebody who's got a, a £10,000 or £20,000 boat would be like, okay, we've put all our money into that, we're going to use it every weekend, we're going to really get onto it. As you get bigger and bigger, you tend to find, so, so at that smaller level, and I would include myself in this to be fair, mm -hmm. at my level with my boat, it cost me, uh, for me, a quite ridiculous amount of money. So I'm thinking I've got to get the use out of it. 
I do that instead of having holidays. The holidays is going and exactly. on the boat. But when you get further up the scale, people are doing holidays, they're going skiing, they're doing this, they're doing that. They've got other things going on. They might have holiday places around the place. So the boat, as you get bigger, becomes a smaller proportion, I think, of their life. That's exactly it. Um, yeah, exactly. You know, they've got holiday houses all over the world as well and, yeah. and other things going on. So yeah. we're not, you know, it's a, a nice thing to come to, but it's not their everything. No, exactly. Mm -hmm. so I'm not sat at home thinking, oh, the boat's chartered, all the shame, we would have been on it this weekend, yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. that makes total sense to me. Uh, having watched the Motor Yacht Loon team develop the YouTube presence, and this is interesting, obviously being a YouTuber myself, but you guys are massive on YouTube now. I mean, you've got the plaque just up behind you already. Uh, I mean, you're really going for it. It's growing, yeah. And it's been a fun journey as well. So Totally. And mm -hmm. the name of the YouTube channel for uh, people who want to watch it? At Motor Yacht Loon. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Somebody has asked, um, given the YouTube presence and how much filming you do, what are the logistical challenges to filming while passengers are aboard and what's the trick to navigating their privacy and other concerns? Of course, of course. So yeah, we've been doing yeah, like YouTube since we purchased this yacht, so just under two years now. Right. And um, But we've been doing Instagram since 2016, I think. So the Instagram's been going a long time, so we've always been social and it's been a been a marketing thing. It, like that's 100% what it is. I mean, we love doing the YouTube, we love meeting the fans and everything that's come from it. Yeah. But number one is it's a marketing. We're showcasing what we can do and trying to get clients in to book the boat. And I know everyone's gonna go, well, how many billionaires watch YouTube? Actually, quite a lot do. Do you know, this, so, this, now you're going to get me on my hobby horse here. Yeah, here I'll just briefly because I get this a lot on doing yacht tours and people say, well, what's the point? You know, and uh, because you're not going to get millionaires watching YouTube. Mm -hmm. And my question is always, well, do you think they've got a separate gold plated internet somewhere? They do the same as what exactly. we do. They just with a lot more money. Exactly. And they definitely, I've had you know, people ask me, have any boats sold because of your. Uh, your videos and yeah absolutely they I'm have I'm sure you've yeah, yeah hundreds totally sure. and the brokers love it they've mm -hmm. had direct high quality leads coming straight from and, and no to the next question I don't get commissioned but anyway I'm going on to me now <laughs> I don't, back I to don't. you so a marketing <laughs> thing for sure and, yeah. and definitely yes I totally get that, that you've got serious people watching them. yeah and we often find even if it's not the client directly it'll be their kids or something that have seen it and then you I know, can say that. Yeah. Come look at this, Dad. Yeah, we should do this. Grandpa, let's book this boat next season. Yeah. So it is, but it's kind of, kind of digressed a bit there. <laughs> but uh, I mean, we'd already been for five, six years on the old boats, already filming guest videos. So I was running around with a GoPro. One of the other deckhands would be flying a drone. The girls had GoPros and stuff as well. And so at the end of the charter, we were giving them this amazingly edited to music family video that then they got to take home to friends and family and uh you know and then hopefully their friends and family got wow that looked amazing uh maybe we'll book that next next year so it was kind of we already had all this content so mm -hmm. it was just now how do we bring it to say youtube and um you know we ba basically just needed to mic some of the crew up myself yeah. and, and kind of just tell the story because there's already drones flying around the guests are already aware and then the magic of editing mm -hmm. you know we just edit the guests out don't make sure the clips where they're in it's removed uh, but otherwise all the big scenic shots that steve our content creator is doing and all the other stuff we've already got it because we're uh, filming that for their video so so rather than just making one guest video we're kind of making two of the same but yeah but yeah and it, i mean the response has been amazing we've got so we're almost at two hundred thousand now so we're, we're wow. not, quite, not quite at your level <laughs> but, but, we're, fast, though. but yeah in 18 months it's been incredible and, i would say uh, you're excited Accelerating faster than I did. It took me longer than that to get to that level. Wow. So you are really going for it in mm. a big, big way. Thank you. So we put out a video every Sunday evening, yep. and uh, sometimes two a week if we can. But uh, of just yeah, life on board. So during the summer, it's more about the destination. So a week in the Amalfi Coast and what you can get up to Croatia, and then in the winter, some of the Caribbean islands. Mm. But then other times, it's you know do, do an Atlantic crossing on a super yacht, check us out in the shipyard, all that sort of stuff. And it's been it's been incredible and guests that do come on board already know us and so that's another great marketing tool is that the guests have watched all our videos and they come on board and it's like they know us and yes. it's like Captain Paul and you know <laughs> big hugs and kisses and yeah. meanwhile we don't know them at all but they they already know everything about us they know the boat they know what we're, we're up to so sometimes they know some of our tricks which, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no it's it's been incredible it's been so much fun and I mean we're loving every minute of it and 
things like today, boat shows, uh, all the people that are walking past and we get to meet. I mean, even just having you on board is, is it's, it's so cool. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I know what you mean actually, because I have had that comment so many times where you know, people come up to me at a boat show and stuff and say hello, which, which is great. I love it when that mm -hmm. happens. But the comment I get quite often is people people will look, like I say, they'll almost kind of like give you a hug and then they'll kind of step back and slightly, slightly embarrassed and go, do you know, I feel like you're a friend of mine. And, yep. and it's like, you don't know me at all, but I completely know you. <laughs> yeah. you know? And that's how people feel. And I think that's what YouTube does is it mm -hmm. really connects people. Um, and I think that's one of the many things that's so great about it. Exactly. I've, yeah. I mean, all the people are amazing. So, I mean, we've got such a fantastic fan base and I'm sure we have a lot of spillover of the same followers. Absolutely. And, uh, I know it gets mentioned yeah. on my channel a bit and I'm so pleased to be doing this and also doing the tour of the boat because I know that I've got many people who've, who've said to me, you need to do a tour of this one. Yeah. So we did that one yesterday. Excellent. Uh, right. Let's, uh, let's see what else we've got. Uh, Okay, here's a slightly more personal one. What is your favourite food, your favourite band, and your favourite sporting team? Uh, okay, a bit of a loaded question. Yeah. There. <laughs> um, sporting. I mean, I'm I'm Australian, so right. you know, obviously, all my all my Aussie teams are you know the Wallabies. I love watching the cricket, especially playing you guys. <laughs> the Ashes every year is always a, a big thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then uh, and then back in Australia, Aussie Rules. Grew up in Western Australia, so Freo Dockers are my team, uh, right. which is uh, for anyone aerial ping pong for anyone that doesn't know what Australian Rules football is. And then what was the next one? Band. Yeah, favorite band. Band. Uh, Kind of all over the place. Um, you know, the deckhands have always got music blaring outside, which usually I'm the old man now, so I'm <laughs> telling them to knock it off. But yeah. uh, and do you say things like that's got no tune and you can't hear the words oh, properly? Definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Um, bit just more chilled music. Yeah. Uh, really, because uh, I'm pretty much working all the time. There's yeah. some usually something you know quiet in the background um, a lot of so, like Cali Rock Sublime uh, Dirty Heads all that kind of stuff cool. in, in the background yep. what was the last one food food food. food I mean we're so blessed on where we travel so it's actually always try to eat local um, you know we're here in France right now um, definitely there's always a morning run to the local patisserie yeah uh, yeah I had a great pan of chocolate this morning uh, Italy I mean you the pizzas and pasta are just some of the best in the world so uh, that and then obviously over in the Caribbean I mean I know it sounds simple but the the rice and beans the jerk chicken all that sort of stuff is always always great as well so fantastic mm -hmm. fair enough right what else have we got this is a this is an interesting one it says uh, how do you advise now they're saying the yacht owner but I think this would be true also for your charter guests exactly the same how would you advise them that severe weather dictates a travel route or or changes perhaps the plans that they wanted to go to a certain place yep um, and possibly changes arrival day or time of destination that kind of thing yep exactly that so must be a tricky one always yeah um, yeah we I mean Safety obviously always comes first. Yeah. So, but yeah, just be upfront about it. Unfortunately, you know, the show must go on. Yeah. So, if it's raining, if it's windy, as long as it's safe to do so. If it's a Category Five hurricane, you know, we we get the boat out of the out of the area. So, hurricanes, um, we're gone. Yeah. Um, uh, because of insurance and just safety. Of course. But uh, if it's you know just a little bit of wind and rain day like today and um, yeah the show must go on so we right. sort of change gears and a bit more less water sports and it can be maybe sh shoreside activities we'll charter get a van and go off on a tour right. um, or we switch in more inside do some games movie days the spa and sauna are going full speed as well but uh, it is one of the things that we just can't control unfortunately but uh yeah, and then it's just keeping everyone safe. So I, obviously a lot of communication with the, the the primary guest on board, be it the owner or a charter client, and uh, just give them lots of information. This is what forecasted. Uh, and, you know, trying to always have a plan rather than just going to them and saying, you know, the weather's not great. You always try to say, well, but this is what we're going of to course, do. Of course, give them an alternative. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and absolutely. it happens quite a lot. I mean, we've shown it in quite a few of our videos mm -hmm. where, say, we'll be, last year, I remember we were cruising to Saint Tropez and we got hit with, you know, 50, 60 knots of wind. And I was like, however, if we turn around, we can tuck into Villefranche and it's actually quite nice in there. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, yep, let's do it. And it ended up being a really, really nice day. So I would have thought um, most people are probably fairly sensible and understanding of that course. you can't. 
can't. You can't. Either way. But equally, when you spend the kind of money that you're spending on this, to then mm-hmm. not be able to do the things you want to do, I guess, can be frustrating. It can be. It can be at, at times. But yeah, we, we always just try to make you try to make it better so yeah. you know we know that you had this plan here on that day however plan b and plan b is going to be awesome and that's where you know we have such a fantastic crew on board that we really step up and just try to make them even forget about what was the first plan that makes perfect sense uh-huh. right what else have we got um okay now the interesting thing and you know, I think it's okay to work. This is public news, clearly. But the yacht is up for sale. I don't understand. Yes. And um, is the plan to get another bigger, better yacht? Uh there's a little bit of top secret information in there. Right. But, okay. Uh, but okay. yes, Loon is Loon is for sale. Okay. And don't worry, we're not going anywhere. Understood. Um, so yes, another yacht is coming. Right. Um, we're not building one, so we are we are in the market. So we are shopping. I'm going to be doing some walking around at the show as well and okay. uh, check out some boats. Uh, definitely better, bigger, we're not really sure yet. So um, the problem is we're kind of at that size range where you go much bigger than where we are and you start sizing yourself out of marinas, so like right. you can't enter Saint-Tropez, you can't enter St. Bart's, um, you have trouble, trouble here in Monaco. Yep. So um, you know, rather than being here on the T-Dock, you end up being stuck all the way out there on the commercial wall. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's, there's definitely something on the horizon. Understood. Um, and that leads to the next question then is, will the team, will the crew stay together for the next yacht? Is that the idea? I hope so. Um, this isn't the military. No. We, uh, <laughs> we are all independent contractors, yep. so the crew have their own free will. Yep. Um, I would love to keep as many of them together as possible. Uh, some of them have been through all three loons, so I assume that will you know they'll come with but yeah. you know you never know the new owner might come in and want to you know offer everyone a million dollars a year and, <laughs> and they offer yeah. me a million dollars a year I might, I might stick around as well yeah but uh but you yeah, know it's, it's all free well so I, I i love the crew we've worked really hard to put together a great team so mm-hmm. but sometimes time between boats take a couple of weeks or months or it could even be up to a year yeah. so you know people have got to people have got to work um Usually, half they'll all go and sit on a beach in Bali or Tulum or something, and uh, and kind of wait for the phone call. But yeah. but you never know. I'd, I'd love to keep everyone there. Understood. That makes perfect sense. And what would you look for? What 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 we'd like to gain with the next boat? What's the sort of facility that you think? Okay, what we'd really love to have next time. What would be mm-hmm. your wish list for? <sighs> um, Honestly, Loon is Loon is such a great boat, but there's a few things we want a bigger TV viewing area. Mm-hmm. Um, the la- so the last Loon had a great sky lounge with a 150 inch TV in it, wow. and uh, and seating for like 20 people. Mm-hmm. And we find uh, you know the owner and a lot of Chinese clients, um, we mostly our American clientele. So sports are such a big thing. So having that you know stadium cinema room, which yep. is which comes usually on the next boat up. Um, yep. An elevator is big on the list. This is the first loon that hasn't had an elevator. And okay. So to, to have an elevator to the decks is important. Um, the beach club, again, we've got an amazing beach club on here. So having you know, another great beach club is highly important. The pool on the deck has been a great feature. We maybe thought it would be a, a bigger feature than what it has been, mm-hmm. but um, you know, it's still it's still such a standout feature of the boat. So maybe that, and then just always room for toys. I mean, we've got the ski boat up forwards. So, you know, more ten the more tenders, the more toys you can fit on board, uh, the better you go. So yeah, mm. interesting. That's very interesting. Okay. Um, and somebody's asked. I think this one kind of answers itself. Someone said what will happen with the YouTube channel will obviously that just go to the next boat I guess exactly yeah exactly so the YouTube channel will go wherever I go yeah. so um, you know even though it is called Motor Yacht Loon it is you know my channel and, and okay. so but yeah it'll stay it'll stay with, with, with me so that YouTube's not going anywhere yeah. I, I promise you so we'll go we'll, we'll end up doing something somewhere brilliant mm-hmm. brilliant Maybe I'll be shopping for a couple of weeks. As when we <laughs> yeah. when we bought this boat, I actually ended up flying to I think seventeen different countries to before we found the perfect boat. Wow! So there was like Thailand, Indonesia, all th- Caribbean islands, couple of trips to the Med, all that sort of stuff. So um, you know, maybe we can do some some shopping and see what everybody thinks about that. Yeah. Good. What else can we find? Oh, can you give any examples of really difficult charters and how do you cope in those circumstances? Um, yeah, we have a few. Yeah. Uh, 
luck, we're so lucky now with obviously the reputation Loon has of supplying such a great experience that we are almost able to pick and choose our clients. Okay. So we actually, if you apply to book a charter on board the boat we do a full background check on our guests okay. um, we do reference checks as well so what other yachts have you chartered in the past and so we know a lot about you before you even step on board That's interesting. so we are so lucky that we don't have the difficult guests anymore yeah. um, or not often yeah. one slips through every now and then <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah we've had we've had issues before lots of drug and alcohol issues and you know some some gentlemen pinching stewardess's bums no and, way uh, really so but that's where you know I have to put my captain hat on and get a bit more serious and de obviously depending on what happens um, we have zero tolerance for you know really any of that so yeah. that's end of charter see you later really uh, that just would stop it we're done you're off. exactly yeah. and I've only ever had to do that once right. so not on this loon but yeah. I've, you know um, we've only ever had to do that once for for drugs on board right. um, and so uh I guess it kind of happens, yeah. but but for the most part, nearly all of our guests are amazing. They're families that just want to be on board, have fun, have family time, and uh, uh, you know have a great time on board. So. And that's the thing, I guess they're coming with a positive attitude. They're coming yeah. here to have a great time, not coming here to complain. Exactly. So, and I mean, they just shouldn't have anything to complain about. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's totally true. And I guess to some degree as well, the, the YouTube business that you've got going on now, that a lot of people, you know, their expectations are managed before they even step on board. They exactly. know what to expect. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, as I said earlier, they they know a lot of our tricks already. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's funny though. Like, they'll come on board and be like, "We saw that you guys pull out the pizza ovens and do a pizza party." And I'm, <laughs> yeah. like, I'm like, "Yeah, we're planning on doing that in like four days' time." I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, calm down. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Uh, no, I obviously I open this up to say, you know, any questions at all for you. And somebody's asked, what's the best way to stop my neighbour's bamboo from spreading across our boundary and into my fuchsias? <laughs> I didn't say any questions. Like, yeah. I should have been more specific. Uh, yeah. Bamboo fuchsias. Yeah. Uh, it's got to be a boundary wall, right? Yeah. I, yeah. Exactly. Chainsaw. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure that's a serious one. <laughs> okay, that's all of the questions from, um, well not all of them, but all the ones that I've picked from yep. the ones that have been asked. There's a couple of questions that I've added myself which I thought might be quite interesting to talk about. And the first, and we have to talk about this, I'm sorry, but um, below decks. Yep. Has that changed things for the charter world? How does that affect mm. people talk about it? Or is it just, and also, how true is that? You must have seen it. Oh yeah. Is it just complete nonsense? Is it exaggerated? What? What's the deal with blow decks? Yeah, and I, I always try to keep my response as professional as possible. Of course. Here. Um, yeah, it obviously is. It's it's brought the world to a kind of what was almost a secret industry before. Yeah, then. I can imagine that. So yeah, that is you know even if I'm meeting random people and I when they you're sitting at the you know airport hotel bar yeah. and they're like what are you doing I'm a super yacht captain they're like oh like below deck exactly so, it's shone a light on the industry hasn't it, it really rightly has. or wrongly yeah, yeah. It, exactly um, unfortunately I don't think in the best of light and I'll, I'm going to tread carefully here because I do know Captain Sandy and um, and some of the other crew and most of them and most of them are amazing people yeah so but I think exactly I think a lot of it is very exaggerated and maybe even scripted mm. um, and so, you know, you got to remember, it's on Bravo. It, it's an America. entertainment program. At it's the end of the day, it's not a documentary, is exactly. it? And I think that's the point of it. Exactly. You know? And I, I think when they are putting the crews together, they they must do some sort of personality test. And they want to have conflicting of course. To, to, to hype up the drama. So, you know, it's interesting you say that. I used to, when the first series came out of, um, what's that thing with Alan Sugar? Um, with the, oh, The Apprentice. Yep. It's The Apprentice. Mm -hmm. The first one they did was fascinating. They got properly minded business people and they were trying to go through the tasks and all that. And it was interesting. And then the second series onwards, it was suddenly like exactly what you said. They thought, hang on, the thing that really got people fired up was the conflict and the drama yep. and all that. And you could tell that they picked people who just were clearly not going to be very good or were going to fight with other people. Yep. Uh, and suddenly they've got the drama in it. And I thought it was a shame because they kind of ruined it. But equally, you know, you've got to look at what they're setting out to do, which is to get views and provide entertainment. And if they see that that's the way to do it, that's what they'll do. Exactly. Yeah. But it, I think it has, you know, it's shone a light on the industry. Some of it's been good. I mean, it, it allows a whole bunch of new 
talent to come into the industry. Well, it and must some give people them, an option as well, because a lot of people wouldn't know that being a, a, a super yacht crew yep. is even a, is even a thing. Exactly. You know, so I guess that must have been positive. Exactly. So we've definitely seen an influx of crew members because of the show. Yeah. And then I think, you know, some people must see the show and be like, wow, well, it's just partying and getting drunk in <laughs> yeah. quite places around the world. But then other people, I guess, have seen it and understood that it is, it is a very professional industry and a lot of that isn't tolerated. Yeah. And, um, you know, they come in and, and do a great job and it is a great career. Uh, it, you know, it is a, it, working on these yachts isn't summer school vacation. It, it, it can actually be a 20, 30 year career. Yeah, for sure, yeah. whereas you're proving. Mm -hmm. Uh, that one we've already covered. Oh, this is quite interesting. So how does working away from home, so I, mean, I don't know what your personal situation yep. is, but how does that work? Because you're obviously away a lot. Yes. How do you manage that? And what is your situation? If that's not too personal. No, of course. Let's do it. So um, so I've, I've, I've been lucky enough that Maxine, my uh, fiance, has been with us on the Loon program and she still works for Loon um, okay. for the last 10 so years. So she's uh, currently back in South Africa, she's the purser on board now, so she was the chief stewardess on the previous two loons. Yep. And then as we bought this one, we brought in Courtney to step into more of that uh, head of service to the guests, and then Maxine has stepped back as the purser. So she's, I guess, almost the con it's basically a concierge south slash accountant logistics manager is right. a purser position so yeah. she runs the back of house of the boat so Understood. and um, and that also allows her to have a little bit more time off the boat so mm -hmm. we are apart a bit more than we used to be but we do still see quite each other quite a lot and so um, she is here on the boat as well as part of the crew exactly. some of the time some of the time exactly. oh, that's good so that really extends compared to somebody who might be in a completely different industry where exactly. you're only going to see them when you're off the boat yep You've, oh, that's, a, that's a good way of coming yeah. that and then all my senior crew as we touched on before most of them are on rotation right. so it is eight, eight weeks away but then it's eight weeks at home as yeah, well full, so full time full at, time home. at yeah. home and some of them come back and they're like Thank, Thank God, God. <laughs> Thank God I'm back at work. So. <laughs> I can completely see that. So, yeah, but you do definitely make some sacrifices. You know, yeah. you miss miss a lot of Christmases. You miss a lot of birthdays. You miss a lot of weddings. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, my grandfather just passed away and you miss the funerals. Um, so there is a, a lot of those sacrifices as well that you that you make. So It's mm. not a nine-to-five job. And, uh, it's, no. And that's that's it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You just got to work around it. But, but then equally hey it's not a nine to five job no. so you know it's a good thing as well exactly yeah. it is such, it is such an amazing industry and uh you know the perks definitely outweigh the sacrifices yeah okay uh last two questions um do you get to enjoy all the luxuries and the toys and all that when there's nobody on board yes within reason right yes yeah. so no 100 percent sure um you know uh yeah, we. It's not like we go and the second guests get off, go and I move into the master cabin. <laughs> so, uh, the interior of the boat is very tomb-like. Uh, when that there isn't um, guests on board, you know, the the girls dust back and whatever, and we close it down. We're not right. we're not sitting with our feet up on the sofa. Yeah. Um, we have our own crew area, but we also, you know, we do occasionally put, drop the jet skis in the water, put the ski boat in, and you know, do a lot of that stuff. Uh, it keeps the crew excited, entertained, motivated, but also, I mean, you have a charter and they want to learn how to wake surf. If my crew don't know how to wake surf, of how course. are we going to teach them how to do it? Yeah. So we do get to have those sort of experiences and, and play around as well. Yeah, and I guess as well, it keeps all the machinery turning over. That's it. It's got everything's got to be used. Yeah. yeah so yeah. nothing worse than boats than just being left and not being used. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, in, especially in the Caribbean, we'll do a crew scuba dive once a week or so, where it's like, okay, after work, you know, five p.m. Everybody meet on the aft deck and we all jump in the tender and we'll go and go and do a scuba dive somewhere or something. It's great training. It's great for morale. It's uh, yeah. It's, uh, Fantastic. Mm -hmm. oh, that makes total sense. Okay, last question. What would you be if you weren't in the super yacht industry? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, I, there's just just so many avenues to go down. Um, I I knew from an early age I always wanted to be on the water. I definitely think I fell into this side. Mm -hmm. um, whether you'd be on a on a cruise ship, uh, sailing, um, you know, merchant merchant navy, uh, you, yeah, military. Um, I don't know. 
Uh, definitely something. You'd awesome. be afloat somewhere. Be afloat somewhere, definitely. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Paul, that has been yes. absolutely fantastic. I've enjoyed that so much. It's Thank been great you. spending time with you, and it's been really good learning about all of this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hope that'll make a good video and people enjoy it. Yeah, I hope so. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's f- good to finally meet. I mean, yeah, totally. Well, we've emailing. been chasing this for a while, haven't we? Mm-hmm. You know, we've been emailing back and forth. Are you going to be at Florida? Uh, you know, no, I'm not, but I'm going to be down at uh, Cannes. You no, know, we're not at Cannes. And, and eventually, we both ended up in the same place at the same time. Exactly. We got it done. So, so next time you come on board, hopefully it's not raining, and uh, hopefully we're out at anchor or. We'll go for a cruise yeah perfect oh, that'd be absolutely fantastic and just again if people want to follow your uh, all of your various channels so you've yep. got Instagram Instagram which is uh, at Modi Learn and you've got YouTube which is Modi Learn yeah anything else uh, TikTok as well Modi Learn so perfect. if you're if you're over there but uh, yeah please follow excellent. along excellent well thank you once more Cheers. it's been great thanks Nick cheers